Ebola, the worst case scenario. Ebola is an often fatal disease caused by viruses belonging to the genus Ebola virus. This genus includes five closely related species. My presentation will focus on the most prevalent strain known as the Zaire Ebola virus. This disease has been in known existence for only 38 years, and despite the extensive research that has been done, the Ebola virus remains shrouded in mystery. In August of 1976, the first case of Ebola was reported in Yambuku Zaire, now known as the Democratic Republic of the Congo. In November of the same year, a separate incidence occurred in Zara, Sudan, among workers in a cotton factory. The outbreak in Zaire killed 280 of the 318 people it infected, a rate of 88%. The Sudanese outbreak killed 151 of the 284 infected, 53%. Interestingly enough, Although it was not recognized for many years, the two original outbreaks were actually different strains of the Ebola virus. The original strain, Zaire Ebola virus, is still the most prevalent as well as the most deadly. There are five different strains of the Ebola virus. The common names include the aforementioned Zaire and Sudan Ebola viruses, as well as the newest strain, known as the Bundabugyo strain. The first outbreak of that strain occurred in 2007. The rest of the strain was discovered in 1989 among Sinomolgus monkeys imported to Reston, Virginia from the Philippines. This strain does not spread to humans, but does spread between non-human primates and pigs. During the most recent outbreak in 2008, six workers from a slaughterhouse who worked closely with infected pigs were found to have developed antibodies to the virus but exhibited no signs of infection. The Cote d'Ivoire strain, also known as the Thai forest strain, was discovered on a chimpanzee reserve. There it infected an ethnologist who had performed necropsy on an infected Ebola belongs to a family known as Filoviridae, which includes the Marburg virus, whose symptoms are nearly indistinguishable from those of Ebola. Filovirus are long, rod-shaped, and bent into U's, sixes, and more complicated squiggles. They are most closely related to paramyoxoviruses, which cause measles and mumps, diseases which do share some common symptoms with Ebola. The Ebola virus is a single strand of RNA molecule bound together with special viral proteins like glycoprotein. The spiky surface on the outside of the virion recognizes and attaches to specific receptors on the plasma membrane of target cells within the host, allowing the virion to penetrate the cell and go into the cytoplasm. Once there, the RNA molecule sends out an enzyme called RNA-dependent polymerase, which causes mRNA to code from the viral RNA rather than the cell's own DNA. The transcription process is now switched and the cells start producing more Ebola virions. These virions then bud off the cell through the plasma membrane, coating themselves in it as they go. The virus's ability to disguise itself with the host cell's plasma membrane is just one example of how effectively it evades the immune system. It targets immune cells, specifically monocytes, macrophages, and dendrites that are involved in antibody response. Not only does it keep these cells from doing their job, but it uses them to get to the lymphatic system and through the circulatory system. It uses a special protein called glycoprotein 
to stick to the endothelium which lines the lumens. These glycoprotein are then able to disrupt signals for the neutrophils so the virus can further evade the immune system. Once Ebola has damaged cells, they release cytokines, histamine, and chemokine, which signals the first line of defense. Studies of humans and lab animals infected with Ebola clearly show the disease targets the lymphatic system, but there are a lot of inconsistencies in the other targets of the virus. There is strong evidence that the virus targets the liver and adrenal glands, and that in those systems it begins to affect the blood. There is no argument that Ebola causes severe blood clotting, particularly in the capillaries. Meanwhile, it's already been working its way through the endothelial cells in the lumens, so blood vessels begin to leak plasma into the surrounding tissues. All this combined creates an extreme drop in blood pressure. The incubation period for Ebola is quite varied, lasting 2 to 21 days. Generally, the first symptoms come on suddenly. The release of histamine and cytokines triggers redness, swelling, pain, and heat. Other early symptoms are flu-like, such as vomiting, diarrhea and abdominal pain, sore throat, shortness of breath, and fatigue. Neurological symptoms range from headaches to confusion, depression, seizures, and coma. Most patients develop maculopapular rashes, non-traumatic bruising, and pupura. As circulatory issues become more serious, patients develop a whole new host of nasty problems. A condition called disseminated intravascular coagulation occurs, in which small clots start absorbing coagulants and proteins, causing clotting throughout the system. This essentially pushes blood out through orifices, mucous membranes, existing wounds, and under the skin. Because of the bleeding associated with Ebola, many people think victims bleed to death, but that is not the case. With severe clotting throughout the vascular system, it is impossible for oxygen to reach the tissues, leading to necrosis and death of the organs. Multiple organ system failure is the main cause of death, and the symptoms that fail are varied.